Oh, sure. Uh, so till the Friday, uh, 2021, 11.05, Mark Antoine was just going to tell us uh, some more about his progress in hyperknowledge. Yeah, and uh, yeah, basically I'm working on the database model. One thing that's pretty clear to me is, well, the, the morning epiphany was that statements uh, or claims or formal statements are also symbols and not concepts. It's a bit Sorry, I, I guess you need a lot of background to understand what I'm even saying here, but it's about saying I can do play the interpretation game with statements as well as with names of entities, which should be pretty obvious. Uh, somehow I had missed it. Uh, and that means, but, but there's a, each statement has a kind of dual nature, nature as each symbol has a dual nature as a sim symbol and possibly representative of a concept. And so you have to say which one you're, you're mean when you use a symbol. And that means that becomes true of statements. Do I mean the statement as anything that could be interpreted from that statement or this specific interpretation that we've picked in a certain social scope? Uh, and yeah, I'm, it's all about what is the interpretation scope of anything we say? And there's a kind of default local scope and there's, well, it'll be interpreted by someone else and we don't know what will happen then. I'm making that explicit, sorry, I'm being a bit vague, but these are the kind, I, what I'm dealing with is basically equivalence class of symbols as concepts and distinguishing claims. Um, but those are also symbols. I guess I'm not being, yeah, I, sorry, I, I don't feel I'm being clear. It's still work in progress, but I hope <laughs> um, to have a UML diagram soon. <laughs> uh, thanks. And thanks for, for stumbling through it, even though it, it's hard. Um, uh, is there, how, how do you represent scope? Scope is, is a primitive in my system, which means uh, we declare, we can declare a scope at any point. I am thinking of using a scope very much like in computer science, meaning nested scopes. That is uh, my thinking, my thinking on this issue, what I'm reading in this document. Um, and a community is a scope. A community, as long as it has a process for uh, accepting, like validating things as a community versus the federation social truth. Uh, but it has, any scope is a space where you can say, okay, within the scope, this is believed to be true, uh, which you cannot do in a, purely social context, right? You can say, okay, some people believe it's true, some people don't believe it's true. But when I say community, is the community as a process to say, okay, the community believes this, even if some members may not. Uh, the, but scopes are just declared. And the event sourcing aspect of uh, statements, I said, was very much at scope level. So a conversation is a scope, which may not, belong to anybody or belong to two people. And then in that, that's the community scope. It's the participants so, in the conversation. So you have a way, that, just in your system, when you get this like organized into a database, you have a way of being able to um, uh, declare that something is not in this scope. We do that in conversations, like, you know, that's great, but you know, it doesn't answer the question, whatever. For example, yes, yes, yeah. yes. yes. Um, yeah, it, it, has, it has to be. Well, first you can import, quote unquote, if you think of, of the scope as a namespace, right? Okay, so you're, yeah, in, no, I get, I get. you're importing and exporting uh, concepts from your scope. You're importing concepts from a, a foreign scope and you're exporting them. And that way, uh, any, uh, 
except except it's not like a formal namespace in that you also should be able to refer to something that has not been explicitly exported. Uh, and in a way you're adding extension points post hoc mm -hmm. with scope. But other than that, it's exactly like import export from a scope. Yeah, okay. So scope is like context? Yeah, very much. And so you're representing context in some particular way? Say that again? You're representing context in some particular way? As I said, it's just a namespace. I give it a name. You have a context. So I okay. So basically, how is say a context that I'm in communicated to you if you're not in that context? I'm slightly confused. Ah, uh, this is the whole question of. In a way, the, the, are you asking about the security aspect, uh, the ACL oh, aspect, or just otherwise? It's just each context has its uh, event queue, and you could pub, pub sub to a context basically. So that way, the activity pub uh, thing is relevant. And some of them will not be event based. Some of them will just be, you know, this document, and then it's just okay. Here's a context and all the statements in this context but most mostly i'm claiming i'm claiming most scopes should be understood as a uh, event stream so if i understand correctly interpretation of the symbol is dependent on context yes and so i might say um uh, you know something like gitlab and that could have a particular meaning or nuance depending on the context that you have either around GitLab or around the conversation that we're having or a conversation that I'm importing it from, which was talking about specific um, eight Git, GitLab APIs, or it could be about the GitLab. Um, Is it the Git? So, so, you know, there's differences if we're talking about you know, a VC kind of context or a programmer kind of context. Yep. So I'm, I'm kind of confused about, you know, say moving a VC kind of um, either frame or as you put it, um, namespace into a programmer frame or namespace, if that's actually what you're talking about. That, 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 no, no, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, so th that's a great example. GitLab, the API, GitLab, the software versus GitLab, the company, GitLab, the service, right? Let's, those are four, already four different interpretations of GitLab. And if I'm in a programmer context where I say, I'm say I'm speaking about the API and I say GitLab as a shorthand for the API. And then I'm importing a statement from a VC context where they mean GitLab to mean GitLab the company. What I would do then is say, at the when you do import, you do import something as, import a name as another name. So I'm saying I'm importing the GitLab name in this context as the company GitLab in my because I probably have a name for GitLab the company in my programmer context, or if not, I should create one. So I could declare whenever I see GitLab in this context, I should translate it as GitLab the company in my context. Uh, so you establish translation tables at context boundaries so that the local names get translated to your local names. Hmm. So, as I've been watching, and, and certainly, um, and thank you for all the work that you were doing, I'm trying to understand some of the underlying assumptions, if that's the right yeah, yeah. level to try to understand, because I'm, I get kind of lost in the kind of, you know, exactly where you're at right now. Is that what, what we need to do is, if we have a symbol GitLab, and this is in many different contexts referring to many different concepts, Correct. we actually need to expand and <laughs> increase the number of symbols in order so that we can point 
accurately. Correct. And and why? Why are we doing that? Because otherwise, I'll import a statement about GitLab that makes no sense in my local interpretation. I'll import something from the VC conversation, and then it's like, how can that be true of an API? I want to say, no, no, that statement was about GitLab the company. So I need to reinterpret uh, the statement with local name bindings, so to speak. So local symbol bindings. And, and it, it especially, okay, why, why, do I, why do I care? It's because I see so many uh, conversations stumbling on imprecise word usage, like, oh, I thought you meant this by this. And then, you know, how can you say that this proves that or that this claim supports that claim? Well, we're not speaking about the same thing because we're not using the same, we're not giving the same meaning to that word. So being able to identify uh, shifts of meaning between words is what enables you to say, is this really proving what you think? Or is that really a sound basis for that decision? And so I don't want to take over the conversation, and, and I, I hope that you and I can talk and, and, and work this out. But it seems that, you know, in conversation, we go, oh, there's a misunderstanding there. Let's talk about that misunderstanding, and let's go back to the main thread once we've cleared that up, and we keep on going. And why that feedback loop is somehow formalized or shifted? I'm, I'm kind of confused about that. Um, yes, I, I, I am trying to make that, to, to materialize that feedback loop as a process so that I can scale it up. The point is to have massive conversations and massive agreements so that the, this agreement conversation where we say, oh, we didn't mean the same thing, gets captured by the system and can be reused in the next conversation. That is an explicit goal, yes. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, it's good to be explicit about these things. Sorry, I also took a lot of time. <laughs> um, I, I really appreciate both of, both of you. That was a great conversation. I hope it's useful. I see you've been working on taking notes. Thank you. <laughs> Well, not many. Um, I, I think uh, you said translation something at context boundaries. I translation think tables was right, yes, at context boundaries. It is a challenge. I mean, I was I was being snarky in the in the comments, but it is a challenge that the the context switching can happen within one conversation you know, even within one sentence. Yep. Uh, so it's a little hard to put on a filter that's going to be, you know, stay in use for. That, that is a perfectly valid point. Uh, it's the, 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 the example you gave uh, in the comment is here, it's not a scope thing. It's this word meta is attached to concepts within the same sentence. And then you can play with capitalization, but instead of annotation is absolutely necessary for that. But I mean, even in language, right? I Gosh. mean, uh, pronouns are an example of text anchors that are used for a bunch of entities. <laughs> we can reuse the same pronouns for different entities in the same sentence. That's just something we have to handle. And I'm sure you know, Mark, and Paul, I mean, basically, what is it in language um, that we use to point to something so that we have mutual agreement of what exactly we're pointing at? So unclear pronoun reference is a failure of Dexis um, in the technical linguistic term. It was, what's the term you're using? Dexis. Dexis, no, I was not familiar. I'm using, I often use anaphora as another uh, linguistic term for the same meaning. Huh. There are there are international conferences on Dyxis on how language points. Okay, um, fantastic. So I would I would refer. It's a huge part of uh, 
uh, Thank academic you. linguistics. Okay. I will look at Dijkses. Thanks. Yeah, here I think it's the uh, some of my linguistics is French, some of it is English, and the fora is probably the French term. <laughs> Oh, Dixus. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, the Wikipedia yeah. article for Dixus um, has oh. the sentence in it. Okay. Dixus is closely related to anaphora. So. Closely related. <laughs> They're sisters. Or twins. Well, step twins. Yeah, I think the anaphora is more at the symbol level, whereas the exis is at the semiotic level. So maybe it is a different concept. So I, I feel like it's not, not quite the same thing, but <laughs> I, I ran into scope, uh, scope with, my, um, uh, with my OGM Thursday. Uh, call wiki, uh, where I wanted the, the the experiment. I think seemed most successful when I tried to keep its the the contents of the wiki scoped to the call. Um, so then, then um, if we did that a bunch of times, you have the scope of each individual call, and then you have to have a higher level scope that includes you know some of the calls or all of the calls or the relationship of these calls to certain topics like metaverse or um, climate change or, or whatever. Yeah, context reference is probably not a tree. <laughs> Why do you say that? We use, uh, it's true that there are subcontexts in the book. I'm, I'm, I'm hesitating. I guess it's, up. it's maybe a graph, right? I least. suspect it is, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's, that's okay. I, I had a panic there. It's like, oh my God, he's, he's saying it's not a graph even. <laughs> it's like something no. else. It's like- No, 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 no. It's probably a graph. I, I, I really don't know because the, the, the question is, in reality, when we say a word, there's a whole connotation cloud, which probably speaks about quite a few other con conversational contexts, right? Mm -hmm. um, there might be a, it's not like if we try to represent it as data, we'll speak of priorities or do fuzzy logic or this or that. But what really happens in conversation is we have priming effects, right? We say okay. something that evokes a certain frame of interpretation that allows you to, uh, that primes certain of the possible interpretations of a term. I, I um, Relatedly, um, I have found Google's ability to do essentially priming um, uh, context around a search is, is starting to get really cool. You know, I'll be searching around, you know, one one subtopic of something, and then I'll search for another subtopic of something. And it's like, I wonder if this is a search that you want. It puts the two subtopics together and it makes a search out of it for me. And often it's right. The other, the other self-aware thing that I've, I, um, when I'm talking to uh, the Amazon Echo, um, I won't say her name, otherwise she'll, she'll uh, wake up. Um, uh, it's, it's interesting giving it homophones or something like that and, and realizing that, you know, their, their neural net had to do a fair bit of context kind of uh, disambiguation to decide what it's going to answer me. And it's usually right. Often it's right. I, I don't have that self-awareness usually talking to other normal people, like regular people. But, but knowing how hard it is for a bot to do that kind of stuff and that they, they're getting pretty good at it. It's cool. I've been thinking about scope the last 24 hours and trying to um, 
make a kind of a diagram that visualizes the different uh, like fractals of scope, how they're at least represented in Trove. Um, and so this has been my interesting project is uh, the scope of, there's like two scopes. One is um, like, what type of information are you looking for? Like how specific is the type of information you're looking for? So that's like, I want to see everything that's in the territory. I want to see a particular perspective of the territory, which is a map. I want to see a specific building on the map. Like I know I want something in Open Global Mind. And then within that building, I'm looking for a specific type of information, um, right? And so that would be in like a room or a space. Like, you know, if you're looking for food, you would go in the, in the kitchen. And then the type of object you're looking for, um, right? I'm looking for, um, you know, a jar or a can of food. And then the tags is like, okay, what things are tagged on this object that can help me filter it down, right? I'm looking for something that's healthy. I could look at the nutrition label and see the different tags. So that's like the specificity of what you're looking at, at like what, 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 um, what lens is your um, microscope at? Is it at 10x, 1,000x, a million x? And then the other um, axis that I've been mapping is like, what is the circle or, that I want to draw around all the information? So one is like, okay, I want to look at like my individual stuff. I want to look at all the things in like a, a neighborhood or like a group, or I want to look at everything related to climate change, like an entire, like a whole um, category of, of knowledge or everything on the platform of Trove in which there are many categories and many groups and many people or across all the internet, like every platform. And so then I started cross referencing and, and in the intersections, like, okay, in between all platforms and the territory is literally everything. But of course we don't have that mapped. So then there's everything that we've mapped on the internet. There's everything that we've mapped on Trove. There's everything, um, there's like all the Trove data types. And then kind of going into across each level is like, what are the different buildings or, or the, the type of space that gives you a sort of scope or like privacy of like, okay, where, where am I looking? So there's like the, um, the different networks, there's the different buildings, there's like your home, and then kind of like, okay, what, what are the objects within those buildings? And so like, you know, in your home, there's like a bookshelf for furniture, but it might be like a space in a larger building and it might be a whole room in, in, a, in a network because it's about how much information, like as you go more to the left, the amount of information gets larger. And so you have a different architectural design of a space when you want to fit two people than when you want to fit a thousand people. And so those like scopes are almost like layers of 10 of like how much stuff is here. This is like one factor of 10, like this is like one person, 10 people, a hundred, a thousand, 10,000 plus a million. Um, and so, and then like all the way to the bottom is like the different tags. And so this is like, we're talking about like, um, you know, information and how do tags change a different scope. So like hashtag mark at a personal level could be like, I have to bookmark something. Hashtag mark at a local tag could be like Mark Carranza in this call. Hashtag mark inside of the network of software could be Mark Zuckerberg. And then anything beyond that, you might have to have like metadata attached to it to give you more information on what that, that actually is. Um, and then beyond that is like different schemas across different platforms, right? This is brilliant. I, I love what you're wow. doing, Nelson. It's a really um, fun and um, I think accessible to the common individual, common person, common uh, 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 person on the street. <laughs> um, and uh, some of the graphics resources were really, really fun. Um, I really appreciate what you did. Um, how do you hope to use this in as a map? I think it's in like, and thank you. 
I think I think it's in helping uh, people like navigate and like how to orient themselves. So the other, what I started with was uh, this spreadsheet and then I started making it visual. So the um, X axis is like, what scale are you at? Which is like, what do you want to be connected with? Um, so like, do you want to be connected with what matters to you as an individual? Okay, that's a different search than what matters to like the flotilla group or what matters to everyone who shares the goal climate or to just all the information in the world. Um, and then, so that's like how intimate <laughs> do you want what you're looking for to be at what level, right? So this, you might wanna search for a person, you might wanna search for a group, or like you might wanna search for a new term like circular economy. And then there's like, um, what scale are you at? Meaning why are you at this level? So if you wanted to see the map, that's cause your intention is like, I want to explore. Right? Like if you look at a map, you wanna find things that you never saw before. That's like seeing really big picture. But if you know what you're looking for, if you know I'm looking for a co-founder with these criteria who values the same things as me, then you wanna go all the way down to the level of like the tags, cause that's where like filtering comes in. If you know that you want to just feel in a, you wanna be in a, you wanna look in a space that you have some like shared values or there's a level of privacy, then you, then, then you know, okay, I'm going to a space. I'm going to like either a group or a, a, a neighborhood or a whole network of people, like a conference. Like I need to find a conference that fits my values. And so I've kind of mapped out like what are the like, emotional intentions at like searching for information on these different levels so like a map versus it is like exploration the building is like privacy and invitation because it's about like putting some semi permeable membrane around the information and then a space is about intention like if i'm looking for a book i better be looking in the library not in the fridge and then the the objects right are all kind of categorized so if i know i'm looking for a specific type of object i know like okay, it looks like this, here's a picture of it. Um, and then like the last one is like the tags and the filtering. And so m what I'm trying to do is like, almost like explain how, like there are different um, tools for the different <laughs> sections there, right? So like a search engine is really good at all the information without really any, <laughs> um, so yeah, there's like, like Facebook is at the level of like individual posts that aren't categorized. And so there's like, you know, you can kind of like almost map out in those different squares, like what tools are good for that job. Yeah, so Vincent, amazing. And, and, um... I, when I look at that chart, I see it in two ways. One is almost like a, um, a guide for organizing data to begin with, right? So that, um, so that, and, and then on the flip, a way for people, as you were explaining it too, to ask the right questions to get to what they want. So it is both a learning tool, if presented in the right way, through for how someone navigates, right? Almost in the sense that they're basically tra we're training people to ask maybe different kinds of questions to help them get to what they need to get to. But then it also, all the data needs to be structured that way, right? So we flip it on its head and say, okay, in order for this to work for people, it also needs to be structured in this way. So as we're having, for me, when I'm thinking about mapping things, I love this because for me, these are the categories that I've been trying to create without trying to define the category itself, <laughs> trying to say we need these categories that are catch-alls for things. And what you have done is put it on a lovely grid. And I love how it's going basically from the internet of everything all the way down to my little world, right? From, from one corner to the other corner. You've done a really good job of creating an X, a Y and, and some even Z access there for, for, for how we should start thinking about the data. And then I also love, it makes it obvious where there are holes, yeah. right? In the current experience 
um, user experience and user interfaces and the way we organize and think about things, there are some obvious holes. And I think that is becomes fodder for interesting discussion of how do we fill those? Because they're, they're going to be an obvious need as we get better at, at navigating information and creating knowledge sets and, and trying to work with everything that the internet provides. So thank you. I mean, maybe you've just been playing around, but that seems like a real um, catalyst haha, for, <laughs> <laughs> for the next thing. Yeah, yeah so I gotta, gotta go now. So um, thanks again. Um, I listened to the uh, um, recording. Thanks again, Mark. Antoine. Thanks, Andrew. Mark. Thank you. I'm Vincent. If you'll allow me, can you project again your uh, yeah, sure. the, the second one actually? The visual one or the spreadsheet one? The spreadsheet. I, f I find a spreadsheet much clearer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, the the visual one. I've only been working on this for like uh, an hour. So this oh, just wow. like all came to me last night and I started doing this like, yeah, like right before this meeting. So this one is like further along, but the visual one I'm like still in the middle of. It, it's, that's why it doesn't, yeah. Okay, it, it may be me being dense, but I don't exactly, it seems to me the two axes are highly correlated, uh, at least on the, uh, on the B column with the two row. The A column I find much more interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, 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 because you're speaking about scale and it seems to me one distinction was in going across, you're speaking about kind of social scale, you know, uh, personal to group to collective, blah, blah, blah. And the yeah. other one, it's, it's like, you say it's spatial scale, but it feels to me that most of them end up being made a metaphor for social scale. Uh, and, and then you have some stuff such as tag and which are cross-cutting filters. So that's not scale, but it's something else. Whereas when you speak about activities, exploration, uh, privacy, intention, those for me, they're, 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 that is indeed cross-cutting and really perpendicular to the social scale axis. But the, 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 the spatial scale, I'm not sure is, I don't see how it's fully distinct from the, the social scale. So mm. Sorry to be uh, less, <laughs> but maybe I'm missing something. What am I missing? <laughs> Um, see something there that I don't basically. <laughs> I'll show you guys um, something that relates to this that uh, I think will answer Mark's question and maybe uh, sure. Maybe, um, and maybe feed a conversation. <laughs> yeah. Let me just see if this works. Um, so just this out. Um, so um, <clears throat> in this example, I, I, I was thinking about this as, um, as uh, Vincent was speaking um, and, and wondering, okay, which of these are on which ax axis of his? But let's say um, I'm searching on factor and I'm just using the word design and, and looking for items. If I'm searching um, just my own stuff, I get these results, um, and I can I can look among the things that are tagged, which is a much smaller count, and then I can go down and say among these tags, uh, I only want the things that uh, mention black and white, or, or tagged black and white, and end up with oh yeah. So, you know, I'm just ending up with, with three items. If I do the same thing um, with, this is, this is your um, x-axis, I believe. Um, I'm just yeah. looking at It's a social scale. Up. Um, yeah. And if I look at the people who are in my network, which I'm just gonna take off the um, tag filters. Um, yeah, now there's so see now like factor. I've, I've got a bunch more tags tags. Because, um, because there are tags that anybody in my network has used, 
and I can't find the black and white one to, to take it off. Um, hold on, I'm just gonna move that. Um, so uh, now, um, search my tags. Hmm. It was it was hyphenated, I think, and maybe the search doesn't find looks at word boundaries. Try, try hyphenating black and white. Yeah, but I'm looking at the tag itself over here in the screen. Anyway, I, I'm just gonna I'm gonna start over with, with a with a, a a new search so that I'm not. Um, there might be some vestigial thing that we have to um, look into with uh, tags being held from one one search instance to another. Um, not exactly right. So, uh, but um, I'm showing this just because the the idea that you could take these things and it's it's not exactly. Um, you know, if I'm searching everything on factor that mentions design without any constraints, I get, you know, 1200 results. Um, I can say I only want the things that have been highlighted by somebody and narrow those results. But then if this would, this would sort of be on your X axis that I could say, I only want the things that have been highlighted, but that were posted within this, the narrow universe of stuff that Ryan Janelle has has posted. Um, and one so I think I think I got it. I think I know what the words are. So. If, and this is within the context of searching for something, and it makes it's the same sense on factor, is the x-axis is, um, let's say you were, in, you were a satellite in space and you were trying to find something on Earth with a camera. One is like, what is the boundary that we're gonna draw around our search? Is it the whole world? Is it a country? Is it a continent? Which is like, is it my tags? Is it like a, the whole network? Is it factor or is it like Google? Mm -hmm. What is the, the, like the boundary that you draw um, around where you're looking? No, then the no, other no, one- Notice, is, uh, you're, um, mixing, you're mixing two things, Vincent, and that's what I'm trying to get. Well, you to, I, I Because you're saying boundary one, as if it were spatial and then all your examples are social. Well, <laughs> yes. So, the boundary is, right, uh, just bear with me. The other one is zoom. And so that's like, I'm zoomed in so that I can only see something the size of an iPhone. I can still like move around and find other iPhones, but I'm like tuned in for like this specificity of object. If I'm looking for like a, a building, I'm not gonna zoom in to the level of a phone. I'm zoomed in at a level where I could find groups and then those groups will help me. Then I can go there and navigate to things within the group. Okay, that, that's interesting. Now I understand a bit better and I see how it's not uh, correlated, good. But would you say that this Y axis then, is it scale or schema? Because if you're looking at phones, you're looking at phones. Or if you're looking at um, books, I could say that some books are not that different in size from phones, but it's not the scale, it's a different object or, or, or uh, you know, books and, books and dishes. Uh, it's the same scale, but is it scale or, or schema? Is it scale or type? Um, and, and I really liked your intent list. That for me was very interesting, uh, but I think it's something else again. <laughs> but but I, do, I do understand that sometimes you want to look at give me the companies and sometimes you want to see give me the people in the companies and that's a different scale and and, and, and you're looking at the com companies in the country or people in companies in the company and yeah there's 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 two axes there i'm beginning to see where you're going thanks that did help i think it's like um 
another way to to maybe represent it is like uh, groupings. So like, mm, like there's a grouping of like everything in the flavor of OGM. And then below that is like all of the, um, the videos within OGM, which is like another grouping because it's, it's about now like, um, okay, I have like the flavor defined, but now I also want a specific like type of so that's that's typing yeah that's what i'm saying it is, is it typing. typing or scale it, it, it's, it could, is. could you replace the type the scale the, the scale by typing i'm not sure and i think that way your activities are orthogonal to the types uh you can be exploring you can be looking at permission you can be at any of the for any of the, the types and i think the the type scale thing is slightly accidental uh though you might yeah. want to order your your types by scale it makes sense but the, that's that's on the y-axis scale the 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 sorry the, the x-axis scale i'm perfectly comfortable with i have no problem with that one and that's the one michael was demonstrating i think well i mean i i i guess i'm questioning whether there really is an x and a y here because the the, the one thing is the universe of what you're searching and the universe of what you're searching unless it's everything in the universe, <laughs> um, you know, is being limited by something which could be, could be platform, could be geography, could be like, you know, type could be, there are all these different limitations that you can cross with each other. And the, 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 the fact that, that the, um, all of factor, my network on factor, just me, which, you know, word on your chart would go beyond to like um, other platforms, which, you know, we, we want to be able to include other platforms and we want to be able to include everything on Google. And then we want to include everything, everything beyond what's on Google. Um, so there's the, amount of stuff we're searching but is that is that supposed access of what we're searching is that any more of a does that have any more primacy than the fact that we're say searching we want to search all documents you know it, it just the, our ways of establishing the universe of what we're searching I don't, know, I don't know that they exist on on two axes. I, I I think no no I think I think that it makes perfect sense to say, uh, for example, I'm looking for a theme such as climate change, and that's that's semantic aspect of the search. And then I'm looking at documents. I'm looking at organizations. A very different type of search. Uh, there's um, I'm looking at. Uh, projects. That's a very different kind of search. So the type matters. There's no question in my mind that the type matters when you're in the search activity. Um, the uh, yeah, and privacy. Yes, Wendy. Is it is that an access? Good question. Or is, but anyway, yeah, you it could be. Yeah, makes sense. But I think those are two different search axes. Clearly, uh, your you're not doing the same search if you're looking for organizations versus say books. It's not, you're not interested in the same kind of thing, I even if it's the it, same theme. But if you're doing- Go ahead, Michael. I was just gonna say, but you're, if you're doing the search that on, on this X axis, you know, that, that factors little drop down or Trove's um, uh, or Vincent's, you know. The, 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 um, if you're using different factors. social boundaries for the search, yes. Well, no, if not social boundaries, but but just sheer. Your, ex your example was social boundaries. Your own data, your 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 network's data, every everybody's data. That's social boundaries, social scale. I think okay. but if, it goes, if it goes beyond to other platforms and other, if, if you're saying, I mean, everything I did was searching items, 
And my search also could have included um, people and groups and, you know, and have done that. Unspecif unspecified type, yes. Right. Would that be, that would also be a social, it would be a social, a social you're, you're constraining on the social axis and not on the type axis. Sure, you can do that. You don't have to constrain on all axes. But if I want all the groups on Trove, that's that those, those are on two different axes, but they're both social. You know, no, I, I, I'm saying I'm saying group is a type for me. All groups, your your groups is a type. So trove is a is a social scale. It's just it's like okay, I'm looking at stuff on trove. That's my boundary, as Vincent puts it. And then I'm looking for groups. Where it does get interesting is when we do connected search. Like, give me groups composed of people who work on climate change or composed of people who have written books on climate change. This is where you get really yeah. subtle. Like climate change may not be in the group description, but you're doing a kind of join and, 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 and uh, this is where the, the, the kind of, uh, you, you, you want a graph database for this. Let's put it this way. <laughs> That's what I mean. And it's just like, if you wanna, I mean, already, if you say, I want to see, the items posted by people in this group or by this person or by these four people whose expertise is in climate change. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a graph, <laughs> it, or, you know, ideally. Anyway, that I, I, it, it just seems like we are all uh, we are all wanting to head in that direction and put those controls in people's hands and and but 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 the the, the yeah 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 the, the the question is what are the search axes and what there's a UX implement, uh, implication, but I think there's a more important implication is when Vincent was trying to relate them to activity and I think that's really the fundamental thing I want to get out of Vincent's work is different activities have different affordances. When you're looking for something, when you're trying to create a curated map of something is different. You may be searching for things to put in a curated map, but it's something else. Uh, it, it, these are, you know, union of two activities. When you're deciding what to share, uh, the, the whole uh, ACL, blah, blah, blah. Uh, when you're uh, trying to s situate yourself in a territory is different than when you're trying to explore the territory. Uh, when you're trying to create your own uh, either curated map or opinion piece or item, it's a different, and if you want to link an item to other items, it's not the same kind of search, it's not the same kind of activity, it's not the same affordances. Anyway, that's, and that's really worth thinking about. And it's true that some of the social axis also matters there. It's like, okay, I found a lot of items about climate change and I found in my group, in my social network, most people agree with me on, on climate change. Now find me groups which disagree with me. Find me groups which, uh, and then let's look at their arguments and let's try to have that conversation, right? It's uh, different. Here, there's the obvious social scope of me, my group, and everybody. That's very primary. But then, okay, another group. I'm centering against someone else. I'm centering against this other, you know, the, 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 the result, I'm saying group is a type, but it can also, of course, become a social scope. Yeah, I, like here's the, um, how this maps, like this whole thing, I want to very easily map to like pages on the web, right? Specifically on Trove and then also on other things. But um, so it's like, okay, am I searching for resources within 20 groups? In that case, I'm like looking at a map that has 20 groups on it. 
Um, or so I'm going to go to the map. I'm going to give someone a map and say, okay, start looking for them on this map. The next level down is like, okay, I want to find resources only within OGM. So I'm going to go to into that building now and start looking in there. Then it's like, okay, I'm looking for resources, but I'm actually looking for books. So I'm going to find a specific space in that building. I'm going to start looking at the, in the book, the bookshelf for the books, right? There's a thousand. And that's books. a type. And that's a type. And, and then it's like, okay, then I also want to do, um, I'm looking for uh, bo books. Um, so I'm looking for um, within all the groups, within one group, within um, books, within books about a certain location and also for a certain audience, right? And then I'm adding like tags to find a specific object. So it's kind of like this stacking of different groupings and I've kind of done it in a particular order, which I feel like makes sense um, because having like a total circular order and process, like, I don't know, I'm trying to add some level of like linear order. through the- Yeah, yeah. but, but, but what, I, what I'm saying is fair enough, but I think that making, like the, the social is clearly a scale thing and you, and types, are another thing. And yes, you can order types by scale if that's oh, easier for you to think about, and that's fine. I have no problem with that. But there's a way in which those two things overlap and your scale categories are also social categories. And you want to be able to say, okay, now that I've identified a social entity as an item, as a type, I want it to become a social scope. Uh, and, and there's a kind of duality there in which they're not very well-defined axes that way. I mean, there is an axis, type is a well-defined axis. Uh, scale and scope is a well, not that badly defined axis, but there's moments where a type happens to be a scope and you have to be able to make that movement explicit. Yeah, that's, that's where things break down because it's like I, um... Right. So like groups are like a very specific cluster of things. But then also I want to search for through a database of groups and I want to treat a group as an object. instead. Uh, of exactly. Them. Exactly. But I'm what like, I'm saying ah! is don't, don't try to shoehorn all your types in a space scale hierarchy because types are types and they exist as types. And, 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 and even though a space scale hierarchy may help you order types, it's it detracts from thinking of types as types. That's and what I'm trying to say. I guess that's sort of what I was trying to say in that I'm like, what, what you were just describing as you were going through OGM and this space and books and then this book and, um, you know, it, it's a telescoping thing that arrives you, you know, gets you to a certain place. But, you know, there are so many different avenues to go through that aren't exactly scale related. And in fact, if you think about, okay, you found that book within the OGM library. Now, what if you take the criteria that you attach to that book, those tags and everything, and you remove the filter of the OGM library. So you're searching, you know, all the libraries that have that book in them as a, as a group discovery mechanism to say, you know, I mean, it's just sort of that, like who links, it's that, it's that sort of mapping function of what else links to this as a discovery tool, who else thought this mattered. Um, so you want to like be able to expand and contract in, in any direction. And maybe that makes it less hierarchical, but I feel like it's super cool, especially for discovery. Yeah, so I guess how I'm thinking about it is like because of the constraints of the technology in some ways where like if you wanted to go from searching all the books in OGM to searching all the books on Trove, you're literally jumping to from the OGM group into the like Trove library, which is like a different URL and will have different search filters because when you search within OGM, there's like local tags. And when you search within everything, the tags are different and there are more of them. And when you're searching in a, a, a cluster of thousands of things, there's a different design in how you will find something. Like you, you have to design the map 
in the mall where there's a hundred stores differently than Google Maps, which has millions of stores. And it's also different from like, you know, my notebook scr scratchings of like my grocery list. So like the scale of how much data is in a particular space is um, different and therefore the filters are different. And so therefore, because I'm constrained by like a SQL database, no code tool, um, I also have to design literally a different like interface to be able to handle that complexity. And so the different interface is like a different jump to a different page. And so I think I'm trying to like represent that in a table of like, okay, this is the page you go to if you're looking for things at this scale and this, this, this specificity. And um, it's kind of based on the constraints of the tool. If I was doing this in a graph database, it actually would look very different. It wouldn't be a spreadsheet, okay. but I guess that's, um, yeah. yeah. All right. So, so, I mean, it's, it's your, you, you couldn't do what I'm saying with just the way you're built right now, but, but. It, it could yeah. be a spreadsheet by type, but, but where, where you have an issue is that, that uh, the whole thing I started with about name translations, right? Like these tags are used in this community. Those tags are used in that community. And how do you map the the tagging of this community to the tagging of that community that's not about database that's totally a different issue but uh the xy thing you're asking for i think it is about type uh every uh item has a type lives in a community communities are nested and so you have a search on two axes it's pretty simple it's just that you have a base representation of social access, which is me, my community, the world. But the reality is it can be my community or any other community at any fractal level that I found. And then you're searching on type, uh, social, uh, like community scale or, or you know, social scale. And you pretty much have your search axes. And then keywords, and the, the keywords is the most complex case because vocabularies have to be aligned. But this is actually, you can do this even in a relational database. Some of the, when uh, the examples I gave of give me the companies with people doing this, those would be uh, joint queries, right? In a relational database. And I don't know how your no code uh, tool allows that or not, uh, but in a relational world, it's not difficult. Um, I'm not saying it's great in to do it in a relationally because it's, 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 well, I mean, actually it's not bad, but here you have a lot of relationships and you may be going a bit beyond the relational that, uh, paradigm, but still, and, and that's why I'm thinking your spatial scale is very much about types and it may be easier to think about it that way. The y-axis you're saying? Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah, thanks Mark Antoine. That's for what it's worth. It's more traditional, it's less uh, of a grand intuition, but I, I, I do think you have something there and there's something about granularity that maybe still escapes me and maybe there's a kind of grouping of types by scale that could be done. So you could have type collections, you know, one of these types that exists at a scale, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but I've, I've, let's say I don't see many cases where translating this to a type query won't be, won't be clearer. And it's, unfortunately it's boring, but it's, it's done, it's classic, people know it. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where it does get interesting, as I said, is if you're able to do the joint queries, saying, give me the groups where people have this characteristic. <laughs> that's, that's super interesting. Mm, right, give, right, right. give me the groups where people have written articles about this. That's, that's the real uh, frontier. <laughs> and making that intelligible in the, in the UX is... Mm. really the, the the frontier yeah the other the other axes that oh, go ahead sorry um 
the this exercise for me is almost trying to um it's like as part of the design science studio i'm working it's like an art regenerative art incubator and i'm working on artwork that is trying to like represent um uh like information architecture but in real architecture the only really place where the laws of physics kind of are broken is that an object in any right inside of your house or inside of a group or inside of a network's building an object can exist in multiple places and trove basically wants like if that object if a page is added into that object it gets added across all the different scales but in terms of the tags i can tag something with like a, a bookmark and no one else will see that but me a group can tag it with like a group tag and only the groups and individuals will see it and then at the network level it gets tagged and then it, it it's seen that level down um and so like if somebody tags it with a different schema on a different platform it won't be visible on trove and like like so there's different tags that are like with different contexts and so you could have different perspectives on the same object but then if you actually like change the right the like writing in the book it changes across everyone's copy of the book but you could have your own kind of tag stuck onto it and so it's like how do we both share and collect information in a personal way and do it collaboratively at the same time and how do we help have a metaphor for understanding that which is like like wait you're saying i'm bookmarking this but it's also being shared with other people but i also have my own copy of it and it's like well no you're you're bookmarking it you're putting in like seven different buildings that can all see it and then you're slapping a tag on it that only you can see and it's invisible in all the other places and so it's kind of like interstellar where like they put the book on the bookshelf and then it like there's these lines that just connect it to the rest of the universe it's like it exists in multiple space time dimensions but that object uh right and that's kind of like how i see like like why are we all cataloging the same website and having our own copy of it why can't we have the same like reference item and then just add our own tags onto it yeah and here's where we get you know that's where decentralized web comes in right where you end up with your own pod of information your own pod of data this is my interaction with the information then we would have units or or you know data lakes that that have a boundary for a particular network of people right and 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 the information shared by the members are held around that same piece of information only seen to those members this is exactly what you're describing from what i've been thinking right so to me that's where your chart and other charts like it are become a guide i don't i'm not sure they're they're a template they're more of a guide, right? To help us see what's missing, and what we need to think about as we design user experience. And until we have more of the technology, technological framework and infrastructure to really build what we wanna be building, which is not, we're not quite there yet, which you highlighted so well when you're saying, yeah, but then there's the part where my system can only do this, right? So I love both parts of this conversation. One is, okay, we're limited by this and how do we, how do we best work with it knowing where we wanna go with it? And then where would we wanna go with it should, were we to have no tech limitations? And I think your grid is, is a conversation piece for both those things and, and in that way, incredibly valuable. Sure. Yeah, the question of the, I, I, I hear you, Vincent, talking about like the holy grail of, you know, why don't we, why do we not have separate objects and all share the same object is, it, it feels to me like, I mean, that's, when you think about that in terms of decentralization, um, Wendy, as you say, you want your pod with your unique annotation that you may or may not want to share. And I don't know how this works on Trove in terms of like you were saying, if I tag something, it's only visible to me. If the group tags something, it's visible to everybody in the group, including me. If the entire network 
um, if somebody tags for the entire network, but is that something where you can say, um, I, I have this, this element um, or, or, or this link to the universal element um, in my pod that I am annotating in all these ways and connecting to all these things um, within my pod. And this, you know, my tagging, I will make accessible to other people. My links to these other things in my pod, I will not. My, this comment, I'm willing to share with others so that there is the ability of the different unique manifestations of whatever that item is to be like if i'm if i'm searching for the tag black and white among you know books pieces of artwork people in the geographic space of the greater new york area i will see the things that you have tagged that way that you are okay with sharing with people you don't know. And, and that may introduce me to you. Um, and so the, the, the advantages to, you know, the, the dis distinct pieces as opposed to the cloud shared pieces, but the ability to assign access um, more freely. And I know we're getting beyond, you know, the technical limitations we have, but just in terms of goals, um, just to be able to say this family of what we might call identical objects um, in, the, in the network sense, you're not seeing one thing where a page, an edit would change everybody's, unless everybody has agreed to that, which is doubtful. Um, but you are allowing people to make their individual edited, annotated version of that it accessible to everybody who finds the mother object or the less precisely defined object, if that makes sense. <laughs> I see Wendy nodding. <laughs> yeah, Mark Anton, go ahead. I'm, and this is really interesting because for me, it goes back to the beginning of the conversation. Is there a mother object, right? Um, I've been heavily influenced by FedWiki, which forks pages and it's like, yeah, sure, there's two versions, there's copies, there's redundancy, that's biological, normal phenomenon. And I think of it more as we have different objects, which we have some notion are different views, different versions, different manifestations of the same idea. And it's not so much uh, I modify it and do have people agreed to have their version modified, which obviously not, uh, or, or maybe some people in my social circle, but that's different. But I've modified it. I've created a modification event on my personal event stream. And then some people may be made aware of, hey, there's a new version, there's a variant. This concept is being uh, affected by someone and someone else and someone else. And then you're like, okay, are there any of those modifications that are relevant to me that I want to integrate? But the, the, the notion that many entities in many databases, in many information systems represent the same conceptual entity, I think is primordial for, from a federation standpoint. We have different data representation, different views, different everything of something which at some level is the same in the world entity. Like a lot of us have probably have in our databases a uh, notion of say the Google company, which and Google has its own notion of the Google company. And knowing that we're all speaking about the same thing, no matter what data layout, it sh and that 
I should be able to say, okay, what do you know about Google? And what do you know about Google? And what do you know about Google, right? And being able to have this federated addressing first, feder federated naming, I should say. And then the next step, of course, is data lensing. So can I view your data structure in a way that makes sense in my data structures? And the next step after that is even sourcing. Can I subscribe to whatever changes you're making to your data object? Because it's what I'm interested in. Now, in terms of uh, search and uh, what Vincent started with, it's a bit something else because, but on the other hand, this is another social axis, which is different from, well, it is. It's like, what does a certain community know about a certain entity? And, and, and it is a very different way of seeing the social axis. And that way, the multiple tags that Michael was showing us, it's like, what are different ways different people have described this item? Wendy. Yeah. So. Um... Right, I, I agree we're starting to talk about yet another axis, which is how, I don't know, have another, I don't have words for this. So I'm gonna make them up and hopefully they'll resonate. How solid is our understanding or framework for the ideas that we're talking about, right? So that's to me, another one, which is, yeah, this is pretty much accepted fact even though there's always people who disagree versus the other end of the spectrum, which is we have no idea. We're totally exploring this idea together. And I think, again, there's a different uh, design framework, potential coding and sharing structures that, that would need to exist for that as well. I often say that claims can be either uh, consensus, polarizing, or fringe, mm. but, you know, and, 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 of course, there's unknown. Which I wrote that down when you said it the first time <laughs> it was months ago. I was like, oh, that's brilliant. Because it is, that's that, that definite movement, right, from, from understanding. And then, of course, there's the times where there's consensus, and then it pops up again as something that's fringe that we need to take another look at because there's new information. So I, I right. love it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like... Um the sorry I, I, I lost my thought i'll head down it'll come back to me <laughs> continue next week or you guys feel free to continue i'll watch the recording no i think i think it's a good, good stopping point unless <laughs> <laughs> yeah awesome conversation okay have, have a, a great one. weekend everybody bye bye. Bye, we'll bye, see, bye see when see you when i next see you all of you Thank <laughs> you.